stuff around my middle. Last year, I had a bit of a tumble. It was in my ribs. And I'm afraid there's stuff on my elbow, which I'm trying to get on. This is the fall I had the other day. The run is phenomenally fast. I've got faith in the Pleasant fellows. All cars be on the lookout for a stolen armored car heading south on Highway 1. What's keeping her good? It was your highway to catch the bad guys. There's gonna be a car with a bunch of sad guys. All of Highway 1. You too? Yeah, I guess that takes care of him. I said stick him up. Hey, don't shoot, don't shoot. Get out. Get in. Oh, boy. Will the chief be surprised and proud? All cars, be on the lookout for a stolen armored car heading south on Highway 1. Where is that apprentice? Thurgood! Chief, I... Um... Don't you know that we have an armored car to find? But, Chief, this is it. Stop rambling, Thurgood. could only manage the bronze once more. Amazingly, the silver medalist from 20 years before, the American Jack Heaton, was competing again. And again, came second. A 19-year-old Italian, Nino Bibbia, in only his second season took the gold. It was the start of a remarkable career that was to last well into the 80s. It was Lord Brabazon in those lean post-war years who saved the Cresta from melting away like the snow in spring. Cabinet minister under Churchill, holder of the first private pilot's license in Britain, and all-round sportsman, he kept the Cresta going by sheer determination. He rode it for the last time on his 79th birthday, and he loved it so much he rode it in his dreams. One rather remarkable thing he could do was to lie in bed at night in England with a stopwatch, and he could start himself off the Cresta and gradually work himself down in imagination and get to the bottom and click the thing. He'd get it within about half a second of the time he'd probably have taken, which did show a considerable appreciation of the subtleties of the route. Nino Bibbia dominated the Cresta for most of the 50s and 60s winning the Grand National for the last time in 1973, exactly 25 years after his victory in the Olympics. The fact that he lives in St. Moritz is undoubtedly part of his success. He rides practically every day in winter, and his consistency is legendary. In nearly 40 years on the Cresta, he's collected more cups than anyone else in the history of the club. Yeah, I have uh, 229 first and 97 second and 80, 84 third. Want to the gold medal for Olympic. Like One of only two Cresta Golds like ever awarded. In 1969, a new star appeared, a Swiss art dealer from Zurich, Bruno Bischofberger. A scientist friend persuaded him to have some tests in a wind tunnel and made two recommendations. He should wear a wetsuit to reduce wind resistance, and if possible, to cut down drag still further, he should ride with his arms back and at his sides in what has become known only half-jokingly as the kamikaze position. It was a daring innovation, and although he makes light of it now, Bishop Berger's ideas revolutionized riding and made possible the sensationally fast times of today. It's easy to forget, too, the courage it needed be the first man to go down head first, saying virtually, look, no hands. 
that was, of course, a little bit daring at the, at the beginning because nobody rode without holding themselves. You had to hold and you felt much safer. At the beginning, it was a very funny feeling and I was much laughed at when I started to do it. And I had also three falls in the, in the first 10 rides. I had three falls each time on Charybdis because I always came late into Charybdis. And if you're late there, you know, when the bank starts again at the curve end, it turns your sled sideways. And if you don't hold, you are, you're off it and you slide for the finish. I didn't mind too much. I was sort of daring quite a lot in those days. I didn't mind too much about falls. Nowadays, the kamikaze position is almost old hat. But if you watch it in slow motion, you'll realize just how vulnerable the rider is with his head only two or three inches above the ice, traveling at about 80 miles an hour on the lower banks. The shape of the run has hardly changed in a hundred years. It still plunges 500 feet down the same valley, three quarters of a mile of diamond hard ice. Just before the big race, the Grand National, they patch and spray it with special care. Top is always a grim place. On Grand National Day, it's at its most forbidding. Even the best riders confess to nerves before the start. Let us get on with the Grand National Dino Bibia to the box, to be followed by Urs Narka, Marcel Belcher, John Serrat, and Urs Fuller. Bibia. 36 years on from the Olympics, he's still a great competitor. Marcel Melcher, the next rider. Bibia safely through the upper banks and on his way. Melcher, the youngest winner ever. Bibia to the finish. Melcher safely round Shuttlecock. James Sunday, the next rider. And Nino, your time with the 